It's finally fall, my favorite time of year to fish. The water temps are cooling down, the shadow moving from the main lake to the backs of creeks, and bass are sure to follow. Today I'm going to talk about my top 10 baits I like to use when targeting these active fish. I organized the baits into four different categories. We have search baits, shad imitations, topwaters, and late fall baits. And for those of you that are interested, I'll include the names, colors, and sizes of all these baits in the video description. This time of year, we have something known as the fall turnover. What that means is the stratified layers of water, known as the thermocline, actually changes and becomes uniform in water temperature for a short period of time, usually about two weeks. Um, during this period, the uh, bass will actually scatter due to the uh, lack of oxygen in the water and become inactive and difficult to catch. Right after this uh, process runs its course, the fishing is extremely awesome and the bass will eat just about anything. So what I like to do to maximize success is throw moving baits like a chatter bait or a spinner bait to cover a lot of water. I'll usually start at the uh, mouth of a creek and work my way all the way to the back. And how I determine which one to use is if I'm fishing soft cover, like uh, grass or other veg vegetation, I'll opt for the chatter bait. But if I'm fishing a uh, hard cover, like uh, stumps, laydowns, or um, docks, then I'll go with the spinner bait. If the water's clear, I'll usually reach for the square bowl crankbait rather than a spinner bait when fishing around hard cover. And uh, you might be worried that throwing a crankbait around uh, laydowns or stumps would get hung up, but the uh, design of the bill, this uh, square design, actually helps the bait to deflect and ricochet off hard cover really well and uh, not only not get snagged, it can generate some uh, monster reaction strikes from uh, the bass. And if you're in search mode and you have some overcast or windy conditions, a lot of times I'll go with the buzz bait to search for active bass. What I like to do is I like to throw the uh, black buzz bait in low light conditions, then I'll throw a uh, white buzz bait in sunny but uh, windy conditions. And that wind is uh, crucial to help disguise the image of the bait and I usually like to throw a buzz bait anywhere from uh, six inches to about four or five feet of water. Next, we have some of my favorite shad imitating baits. The first one being a lipless crankbait. Uh, this bait is another great bait to cover a lot of water. You can bomb cast, and it, uh, the profile of it matches a uh, shad perfectly, the, uh, especially the type that the bass like to school up and feed on. Um, I'll either fish it with a burning retrieve, making a super long cast on uh, long flats, or uh, anywhere in the creek and just uh, retrieve it back trying to create a reaction strike and uh, when the water is cooler I can actually yo-yo uh, this bait as well using a uh, lift and fall retrieve. Um, the nice thing about this uh, KVD Red Eye Shad is that when you lift it up when it goes uh, back down the bait will actually, actually uh, shimmy on the way down. That type of action is uh, perfect for imitating a dying shad and another bait that's uh, great for that is a uh, hard jerk bait. I like to fish these super erratically when I'm uh, fishing around areas with shad, with, uh, usually with a jerk jerk pause type cadence. Um, sometimes I'll mix it up, do a jerk pause, jerk jerk pause, mix it up as a, uh, like a one pause, two pause, three pause type of deal. But uh, these can uh, definitely generate some really nice reaction strikes. I don't cover as much water with it, but uh, I can mix it up depending on the water temperature and uh, vary the length of my pause to uh, match the mood of the fish. Then if I want to fish a jerkbait style lure, but I'm fishing really shallow water or there's a lot of grass, then I'll go with a, a soft jerkbait like this uh, KVD Caffeine Shad. I'll fish it the exact same way, usually a jerk jerk pause, and the pauses can range anywhere from uh, 2 to 8 seconds. Um, and another nice thing about uh, this uh, Strike King bait is that when you pause it, it'll shimmy just like the Red Eye Shad on the way down, and that can uh, cause strikes as well. Whenever I see bass busting on a school of shad, the first bait I reach for is a popper. What I like to do is throw it out to the, uh, wherever I see the activity and I'll let the ripple settle before I start my retrieve. If I don't get hit on the pause, I'll usually uh, pop it, pause, pop it, pause. And uh, more often times than not, after the first uh, two to five pauses, I can get one of those schooling bass to uh, explode on it. If I'm out fishing, I notice a lot of random blow-ups. I'll often use a spook style bait it does a uh, great job imitating a uh, fling or a uh, scared shad, maybe one that got separated from its school. And uh, you can cover a lot of water with this bait as opposed to uh, something like a popper. In fact, uh, this is probably my favorite topwater bait to use in the fall because I can either cover a lot of water with it, fishing uh, 
uh, having it walk the dog side to side the whole time, or I can uh, kind of go with a uh, twitch twitch pause with a jerk bait, but on top of the water, and that can sometimes be really effective as well. So say it's November, we're getting into the late fall period. Um, the water temps are dropping 50 degrees, 45 degrees, maybe a little lower. That's when I like to use these next three baits. As the water gets cooler, shad activity drops and their movements become much more subtle. And one of the most well-known baits to uh, catch them during this time of year is a Rapala Shad Wrap. This, uh, this type of crankbait has a really tight wobble. It's almost known as a, uh, usually known as a finesse type crankbait. And for some reason, it does a great job catching those uh, late fall bass. As the water dips below 45 degrees and the shad starts to die off, they'll kind of do this thing where they uh, sink to the bottom and they'll give one last burst of speed where they'll jump up then they'll fall back down, they'll jump up and fall back down. And this blade bait imitates that action perfectly. So anytime I have a clear water and a clean bottom, the blade bait is probably uh, what I'd consider my number one late fall bait to use. Last up is actually the only bait I'll use throughout the entire year. It's the uh, jig. And uh, what I like to do uh, during the late fall period is I'll fish it really slow, usually dragging it a couple inches at a time along the bottom. Uh, one cast can usually take me up to a minute to retrieve. I'll throw it around hardcover, docks, uh, rock piles, and as well as uh, ledges and uh, drop-offs. Um, this bait usually won't get hit too many bites um, this time of year, but the ones you get will uh, often be quality hits. Alright, I know um, that wasn't exactly 10 baits if you're counting, but uh, I didn't want to jip you guys and only put down uh, 10 baits when there's actually 11 or 12 that I really like to use. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned for the next one.